We all know that person that loves to brag about how many pages of notes they have for a certain subject. Well, you can feel free to tell them that they're doing it all wrong. I know it sounds a bit harsh, but if you're going to be having millions of notes, it means that you're wasting your time and you're not making your notes effectively. So in this video, I'm going to be discussing the different ways that you can take your notes. Please know that this is multiple ways of taking notes some that i've mentioned some that i've not even mentioned but even with the ones that i'm going to be mentioning it can work for one module and not another it can work for one topic and not another so you might have to use one method you might have to use a multiple of different methods so that's why it's important that you become creative and you're willing to use different ways of writing notes for each different topic and module because that is the best part about studying finding a method that works for each individual topic or module to make sure that you're grasping the information effectively. Before taking a note, there's about seven things that you need to prepare for before you actually embark on the process of making your notes. Number one, you need to make sure that you are aware of what method you're going to be using for each topic. So before you even start writing your notes, it's not a thing that you just haphazardly start. You need to think, okay, while I'm looking at this topic, what type of writing setup does this require of me? And you work according to that. Second thing is you need to adopt a note taking mindset. So when you're taking notes, you need to make sure that you are fully present with what you're doing. You're not be absent minded. You need to understand the information that you're about to write because now you need to tell yourself, okay, so this is the topic that I have. These are my learning outcomes. How do I simplify the information that I have to be able to cover the learning outcomes? If you're not going to be absent minded when you're taking your notes, you're very likely to add in extra information that doesn't need to be there. So you need to be telling yourself, I need to be summarizing these notes, but they still need to make sense. So be fully present in that process. Third part is I've already mentioned is you need to use your learning outcomes or your syllabus to structure your notes. Sometimes your PowerPoints will add in extra information about a historical fact or an example that might not necessarily be asked in your test. The fourth thing, when it comes to examples, there's two types of examples that you can include in your notes. The first type is examples that are most likely going to be used in an exam. Then the second type is an example that is going to help you with your understanding. So as you're putting in your examples, you just need to be aware is this helping me understand or is this going to be something that's going to be asked in a test even an example that's going to be asked in a test then you might want to add a bit extra information explanation that sort of thing to just jog your memory when you are going to write about it but if it's an example that is just for you to help with understanding for example using some analogy about your aunt that sort of thing if it's nothing related <laughs> to your topic but it's something that helps you remember then it doesn't have to have as much detail in it the fifth tip is you need to put your notes into your own words. If you can use your own language, it will be much easier for you to regurgitate that information when it comes to the exam because it's something that naturally comes to you. Instead of using textbook language, that will be much, much harder for you to recall in an exam. The sixth thing is try to create a visual aid for your notes. Your notes don't always have to be words. You literally can turn those words into a diagram that can either be a table, a chart, a floor diagram, a mind map. Notes do not always have to be in a written form. You can draw and be creative about it. Even if you're not good at drawing, but using arrows and using stars and using hearts, just different shapes for you to get the flow of your notes. Trust me, it just helps your brain to be able to visualize and understand the information better. And then the last thing is you need to make sure that you're constantly going through your notes. Yes, you can write your notes the first time. Go through them again. There might be something that sparks your imagination or something that just sparks your knowledge and say, you know what, this part, yes, there was a paragraph, but I can turn it into a diagram or this diagram. You know what, when I'm revising, it's not really helping me understand. Maybe I should convert it back into a paragraph or maybe I can condense these notes a bit more. So your notes are not something that you make, set and forget. It's something that you constantly revisit and revise. So the first type of note taking system is something that I would like to call the four by one method. So this method is when you take a PowerPoint and you print it, you print the settings into 
four sheets per page so you end up having four slideshows on one a4 page so you print it and then in class or even before class then you're adding notes on top of the powerpoint itself so obviously this method works if your lecturers are going to give you the powerpoint in advance or even just after class then you're adding your notes on top of the powerpoint itself it just i guess just saves you time because you don't have to make new notes from scratch and then you can add notes from like a textbook or from a video you watch on top of those notes that are already made for you because some lecturers are really nice and they give you good notes however the downside with this is obviously there's a financial and space and paper waste thing that's happening because it's a lot of pages that you have to print most of the time and obviously you're going to have lots and lots and lots of papers to study at the end of it so that's the only downside so what i would usually do to mitigate this problem is i would take the powerpoint before i print it and try to summarize the powerpoint because sometimes a lecturer can give you like a 4d slideshow powerpoint that you can condense into 10 because remember some of the other slides are either questions that is going to be asking in class it can either be pictures it can be like little diagrams that are there so forth that you don't necessarily need for your notes when studying so you can condense them into a shorter form you can combine two or three slides into one by making the font small etc that is just to decrease the amount of paper that you're going to be using and also it saves you money with that process but that method it's a quick and easy and you don't have to waste a lot of time making new notes after class so the next method is your outline method this is a method that just naturally comes to us so this is when we say heading bullet points about that heading next heading bullet points subheading eight points so forth it's the normal way or the natural way that we all take notes so this one is pretty simple because you can use your learning outcomes as your headings when you're creating your notes if you're going to be handwriting your notes with this method just make sure that you leave enough space under each uh, point in case you need to add any extra information from a textbook from a video from what your lecturer is saying but the easiest way of course would be for you to do it on a laptop or a computer you can type it up if you ever need to add in extra information then you can just put a space and then add in the information then you can print it or keep your notes digital so this method usually works for modules or for topics that are quite theory based that have a lot of writing because obviously there's a lot of explanations that you need to do but however it can be very time consuming because it's a lot of detail that you have to add in but it's the simplest out of all of them and it naturally comes to us the third method is what is known as the cornell method with the cornell method you divide your paper into three so you've got a small part on the left which is for your cues then at the bottom you leave a small space for your summary then the other big section is where you make your notes so in this section you can either use your four by one method you can use your outline method you can use whatever method you need to do to make your notes on the note section but your outline method will usually be your point of reference then under the q column is where you write any triggers or any cues for you that you need to remember whether that's a topic or an important person or an important fact that is related to the notes that you have in the main section and this is usually where you can add in the comments that your teacher makes during class this is where you can write possible test questions that can come from a certain section of your questions so this is when you have made your notes and you just need another space for you to be able to add in extra information then the bottom part is where you put a summary so you can say okay you've written your notes during class then at the bottom you just add a summary of what your teacher was saying usually when i did this method i would leave the bottom part for me i just didn't feel it was necessary for me to summarize the notes that i had already so i usually have the cue part and then the note section and then just use the note one to add in extra little things that might pop out during a lecture while you're studying something that someone says during a tutor session and that's all the fourth method is your mind map for me personally i feel like this is my favorite method so this method is for topics modules or subjects that are very abstract or interlocking ideas that you need to be connecting to each other so you have your main point and then you've got branches that come out of it and then other ideas can come in and be added on so it just creates like this beautiful artwork mind map like a spider web type of thing where different ideas are being put into one 
So this is a method that you can use for combining like different topics where you can have your main topic like from one lecture slide but then other topics from other modules that you can add in just to add extra flesh to the first topic that you have so this is usually for those topics that really link to one another because you'll notice that with some of your modules you have like your first topic starts with the main idea then as you branch out or as you go on with your other topics you know there's always things that come and link to the first one so this is a great method for you to combine different lectures different topics different modules even and creating like this big network of an idea the fifth method is your summary sheets so summary sheets are somewhat similar to your mind maps because your mind maps you're condensing a lot of information together because they interlink with each other whereas with your summary sheet is you're combining or you're condensing a whole topic a whole lecture or a whole module on one piece of paper usually a for one sided or you can say double sided so with this method you need to have quite a bit of skill because you really need to be very good at summarizing and only keeping the important notes that you need so i would only suggest you do this method if you really know that topic well because remember the summary sheet is going to have very few information so you need to have in a full understanding of this topic and your summary sheet is just going to be giving you like a jump start for you to refresh your memory so you can use your summary sheet where you have started with either your four by one method your summary sheet and as you're going through your studying you are condensing your notes further and further and further and usually your summary sheet is the last method that you're going to have or you can have the same outline method but on a summary sheet and obviously just make it smaller and a bit more simplified the sixth method is your flow diagram so flow diagrams you will not necessarily use them for like a specific module but maybe a specific topic so topics usually about the human body they are the easiest ones to use a flow diagram for so flow diagrams are really great for a sequence of events and the last method is your cue cards for me i think cue cards are the best like study to note-taking system ever because with cue cards it's about converting your notes into questions and then you creating answers for those questions so there's multiple ways that you can go about this when making your cue cards so you can either write your notes either using your four by one method your outline method your cornell method flow diagrams mind maps etc and then taking the main points from those notes and converting them into cue cards the other way is that maybe a certain part of a topic or a certain topic in general just has a lot of jargon there's a lot of little tiny things that you need to remember for example if you need to learn about your bones if you need to learn about your different molecules and your elements and it's just a lot of things that you need to remember pharmacology is a big one then you use cue cards in that way another method is that you've made your notes with all these different methods and you've created your questions hint hint i made a video i think last week about how to make past papers for yourself if you don't have past papers so refer to that video but let's say you've created these questions for yourself then you can turn those questions into cue cards then the other way you can go about it is you just don't make notes for that topic at all so the same way that you're going to be writing your notes where you're saying this heading then this type of knowledge this heading then this information then you convert that from the tracks book straight into cue cards so as i explained in the beginning there are seven things that you need to do before you start taking your notes and then you've got your seven ways of writing your notes so with studying it's a creative process don't make it too complicated but definitely explore and play around with these different ways of taking your notes because one method to work for one module or for one topic but it might not work for another so be open to using different ways of writing your notes and remember with these notes it can either be handwritten or it can be digital i don't think either one is better than the other one yes with writing people say that you remember better because you're putting in the work but if you're doing it on a computer or a laptop you can make it colorful you can add in diagrams that you can't necessarily do quickly on paper and you get to remember information that way so either one works but be creative and 
be willing to explore with the different methods that are there so definitely comment down below and let me know which method of note taking do you use did i mention any of them that you use or do you have any other new one that you use on your own let me know all of that down in the comments below so until next week friday 12 p.m south african time have an awesome one bye guys mm -hmm.